He joins us now with much more and as my guest host this hour, Don Peebles. He's the chairman and CEO of the Peebles Corporation, the multi-billion dollar real estate developer who has properties all across the U.S. But Ramey, just to follow up on your report, which sure. I thought was an excellent report. Thanks. Uh, what does this mean though? When we see a, a wage hike like this, what will that eventually mean for price hikes and for jobs in Seattle? Well, you know, that's a good question. A lot of people still aren't sure because it actually hasn't taken effect yet, right? So we're going to have to see what the ramifications are down the line over the next few months, the next year or so. Now, when talking to that subway owner, Matt Hollick, he was saying that uh, he's going to see a 29 cent hike. Right now, those subs are about $5, 5 50 or so, mm -hmm. you know, 29 cents is not a lot, but you know, over the it next year up, or so, right? six bucks, six fifty, we go to Subway to get something cheap. We don't go there for, for anything gourmet. Uh, that's where I go there for my, for my cheap sandwiches. <laughs> All right, Don, what about you? You're a private employer. When you see a move like this in Seattle, what do you say? Well, look, first of all, our company doesn't hire, have any minimum wage workers uh, who work for us. So, um, you know, people who are earning you minimum wage. You don't, but this is all about, about I, wage pressure, though, Yeah, right? but you know what? I think, I think that the big, this, it's a, a political discussion. The political discussion has been this growing uh, difference um, or, uh, between wealth and, and income disparity. And so the topic of discussion politically has been income disparity. We saw it here in New York City with the election of Bill de Blasio as right. mayor. It's you really, see this in Chicago. Too. Chicago right now, which is what brought Rahm Emanuel into a runoff. Mm -hmm. um, it will be looming in the presidential election as well. But it's not going to get solved by raising the minimum wage because those are the people at the bottom. What's happening is the middle class is shrinking and there's tremendous pressure on the middle class. But more than anything else, for the first time in our nation's history, more Americans believe, the majority of Americans believe that the American dream is not accessible to them. So what that tells you, there's a tremendous disparity in opportunity. And it might be answered in a move, in a policy move like this, or at least, I mean, this no, is not I think I think it's got to go much further than this. Look, take take New York City for example. 56% um, of New York City's population is minority, um, and 52% of New York City's population is female. Mm -hmm. Yet, our city has only done 3.9% of its government contracts with minority and women-owned businesses. So, the vast majority, over 96% of the city's economic opportunities are given are to not. a minority class of the city. Right. And so until you start changing that, because women are going to hire more women, women-owned businesses are going to give women that their is true, opportunities. By the way. Don, hang on. That, that is true. More minority-owned businesses do hire more minorities, and women do hire mm -hmm. more women. Okay, Don, we got much more to talk about. Don Peebles stays with me. Ramey, thank you so much for joining me on that great story. You are watching In The Loop live on Bloomberg Television and streaming on mobile and Bloomberg.com. Good morning, I'm Betty Lou. Well, forget fears of a bubble. The housing market is in its best shape since 2001. That is according to Nationwide Insurance. They nixed concerns of a national downturn and said saying that growth is going to be steady and sustainable over the next few years. They also outlined the best and worst markets right now, making the top five. Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Philadelphia, my hometown, down at the bottom, Atlantic City, New Orleans, and Bismarck, North Dakota. You can probably guess why Bismarck. Well, I want to bring in my guest host, Don Peebles. He's the chairman and CEO, as I mentioned, of Peebles Corporation, the multi-billion dollar real estate developer. So, uh, Don, all of that is consistent with some of what you're seeing through your business, right? Yes, absolutely. In okay. fact, we're doing a new hotel in Philadelphia right now. And, and, and I think you look at those cities at the top five cities, those are the ones that were coming out of the recession later, major cities that were coming out later. Um, and then you see the bottom five are the ones that are struggling for fundamental reasons. So if you live in New York and Miami, you what, get a skewed view that that, that we're in a housing bubble because they are so separate from what's going on in the rest of the country? Yeah, I think so. Well, the demand... And San Francisco, the, well, I gotta throw that in yeah, there. Yeah, I would say San Francisco. Look, San Francisco okay. um, um, has a shortage in terms of, of, out, of housing keeping pace with its a natural growth in population. Mm -hmm. The growth in population, um, say it's about 40,000 new residents and during the time period, they've only increased housing supply by 7,500, so there's an imbalance. New York City is an amplified imbalance. So the, the imbalance between supply and demand um, is what creates such strength in a New York City market. But isn't that a good problem? Doesn't San Francisco have a high, don't they have a high-end problem now? 
Well, San Francisco's problem is that only 40 percent of the median in how income households can afford to live in San Francisco. So okay. basically what you're having now is a, a shrinking um, population that can stay in San Francisco. So the middle class is being pushed out of San Francisco to the East Bay. So it's good for the region because San Francisco is a supply constrained market. It's a very small city, so relatively you see, speaking. You can see it spreading out. Oh, yes. So are you looking, so are you, are you going to look for opportunity there? Yeah, we've developed in San Francisco in the past and we're looking in the East Bay, for example. Oakland, okay. I think, is a great environment. Um, and Berkeley, um, you know, you've got a a tremendously educated workforce there. So I see there's, on the commercial real estate side, you're gonna see the East Bay pick up as well because San Francisco's so expensive um, as well. Uh, last year, so many property developers were on this program saying Miami is the hot place to be. You've gotta go down there, Betty. You need to move down there. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, and the property prices are going up and up and up. But that's not the case anymore, is it? No, look, I think Miami's a wonderful city because it's got great climate and it's a unique, culturally diverse community. And so it's an outstanding place to live and visit. Um, in terms of real estate, it has um, some fundamental flaws. It is a vacation-oriented market. It's a leisure-oriented market. And so the vast majority of the multifamily buyers, buyers of condo units, tend to buy vacation homes. And 70% of those buyers are foreign buyers. So 70% of the market for pre-sale construction in Miami um, for are condo foreign. Market. For condos, yes. Okay. And, and what's happened is, is that you had this, you know, when the, when the recession came, the faucet was turned off in Miami very quickly and very mm -hmm. tightly. So there's been no real new supply for many, many years. So from, say, 2008 to 2013, there was nothing, nothing new coming online. Nobody now, can get a loan. But, right. But now, uh, Florida actually is a very unique place in that regard, too, because no one could get a loan. But now, um, the condos that are being built are financed with buyer deposits. So think about this. Okay. The typical buyer puts down 50% of the purchase price and the developer can actually use 40 out of that 50% of those deposits for to constructions build to build a place. So in essence I love that. The, right. So in essence so the buyer is an investor taking a, a, an unsecured investor in the development of condos in Florida with no security and no real underwriting of the developer. And so if anything goes wrong, they lose their deposits. They lose their deposits. So, so it's, it's like, a, I promised to build you this, just give me the money. Right, and even, <laughs> That's what and, it is. and so, so a typical construction loan, say in New York City, between a senior and, and, and junior debt is gonna be about 80% right. of the total project cost. In Florida, the debt is about 40%. And even then, it's a heavier lift to get projects financed because the financial markets don't believe in the long-term stability of Florida because it's so volatile mm -hmm. because when a recession hits or a currency crisis takes place, um, boom, yeah. there's no need to buy a vacation home. All right, uh, Don, stay with me uh, with much more, but I want to get to Julie Hyman now because we've got, all right, they believe in market forces. Well, we're going to have much more from Bloomberg's exclusive interview with Brazil's President Dilma Rousseff throughout the day here on Bloomberg Television, so stay tuned for much more from her. But staying with Brazil, the country is battling to regain the trust so not only of voters, and she is in particular, but also of global investors. Well, still with me is Don Peebles, the chairman and CEO of the Peebles Corporation. I mentioned the multi-billion dollar real estate developer. So Don, there's two ways here for global investors. So number one, investing in Brazil. Do you have any interest? Yeah, you know, look, Brazil's got a great real estate economy because there's a huge demand and a, you know, and a very a, a tight supply. Right, um, and an emerging middle class. Right, an yeah. emerging middle class. And, and so look, what's a depreciated uh, currency is gonna keep more of their capital in because the stronger their currency is, more of their investors go, or more of their residents go to South Florida, for example, yeah. and buy condos or invest in real estate. And that slowed down significantly. Well, I was gonna say, have, the, have you seen from Brazil because you mentioned Latin America, right? Mm -hmm. So what about Brazil in particular slowing down uh, in terms of buying properties, you know, in, in your market? Oh, yeah, definitely there's a slowdown in South Florida. And Miami... Slow um, down by how much, um, would you say? Oh, I would say that, you know, what was a ro robust pre-sale condo market last season mm -hmm. in Miami is now become sluggish. Um, it's a unreported, undiscussed reality that's taking place. Everybody's sales are down from the developer pre-selling condos at 
$500,000 a unit to the ones like us at $10 million a unit. They're all slowing down because the um, demand from foreign buyers, such as Brazil, has come to almost a halt. Almost a halt? Yes. Okay. Because I know, you talk to any real estate uh, developer, that's a good reality check, Don, because you talk to any real estate developer, anybody in real estate in Miami, things are great, things are wonderful, sales are brisk, you know, I mean, I think, you know, that's generally what, what you hear. But, you know, there is, there is, the, and then there's the reality. Um, okay, so uh, I want to turn to politics, though, Don, because you are also uh, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Vice chair. Vice chair yeah. of the Congressional Black Caucus. So uh, we are, in April, expected to see several candidates come out and run. So bring up this, uh, th th this uh, photo that we have, guys. Uh, so you've got uh, Rand Paul, who's going to be announcing in just a few days, right? Marco Rubio already said April 13th is a day. Mark your calendars. Hillary Clinton likely to announce sometime this month. And Carly Fiorina as well, Don. And, you know, Carly said over the weekend to Fox News that there's a 90% chance she's going to run. Let's play that. Let's play that comment. What are the chances that you're going to run for president? Very high. You, you're a former businesswoman? Give me a number. Higher than 90%. Oh, higher than 90%. What do you think of her? Well, look, I think she's exceptionally qualified. Uh, look, I believe that a, a candidate with business experience is a necessity to run this country. I think if you look at, look at New York City, um, Michael Bloomberg did an outstanding job managing New York City through some difficult times because he came in with management experience. The presidency is a very tough place to learn on the job. So I think that the candidates that will resonate with voters when they give a thoughtful review will be those who have qualified business experience. And so she would be an exceptionally talented candidate. But she, um, has, I think, she, but she had a sketchy history at HP, though. You know what? Business is sketchy. Everybody has ups and downs in business. But if you're in the arena and you're playing that playing in that arena at a high level like she is you're going to have tremendous experience and so i think that her experience is going to be an asset um to her as a candidate i think she is it'll be a very difficult road for her um to win the republican nomination frankly anybody other than jeb bush um you know i think jeb bush has got a clear pathway to the nomination scott walker could be a bump in the road for him but uh i think and you're a, close to jeb yes. why hasn't he by the way quickly why hasn't he declared yet oh well i think they're they're gearing up for it i think that you know look he's doing his homework and and gearing up for it but i think he's you know well positioned to be a very com uh, competitive candidate because of his business and prior government experience as governor of the third largest state in america right and coming from the bush family which has worked for and against him all right don yeah. we're out of time okay. <laughs> thank you so much great to see you don good don good to see you. the chairman and ceo of the people's corporation